a quick video on Nelson and experiments as a response to a question I got because it both says something useful in, in summarizing the key message in Nelson. It highlights some a key aspect, a key challenge of experiments, and says something more general about the, the difficulty of, of, of doing science. So first, just a quick reminder of what was it Nelson's 2060 text really was about. And and as a contrast to business economics, this text highlights what classical physics and to some degree astronomy is about. It's about studying, for instance, atoms that are just in all respects basically identical. A hydrogen atom in Denmark, in South America, on Jupiter, anywhere else in the universe is just the same. It's absolutely identical. We can look at a billion atom of them in this room and they will be identical. And, and and one can sort of make a similar point with planets, even though they are actually quite different. If we were just want to predict how and where a planet will move, where will it be a month from now, we need the speed and the, the, the mass and the size, and that's it. We, would, we can sort of ignore all sorts of other factors. So we're actually in a situation in physics where the challenge of doing science is in many ways easier because an atom is an atom and there is not a lot of stuff or an heterogeneity that you have to care about. And that's the contrast that he wants to create to the field of business, business economics. We are dealing with people and companies that are just different in all sorts of respects. Um, of course, human beings are similar in many ways, but there is no human being that is as identical to another one as two atoms are identical, two similar atoms are identical to each other. So there's a lot of heterogeneity. Um, we cannot say something is just the same. So whenever we sort of want to make a prediction or comparison about something, um, we're not comparing identical things. So we don't have these sharply defined boundaries. Second, in contrast to when we want to predict how a planet moves around, there are all sorts of things that influence, um, for instance, how human beings or companies behave and what they do. So the number of things that can influence are numerous, they're highly variable. It's actually difficult to sort of separate them from another. So we can try to define innovation on unemployment or, or similar um, concepts, but there is heterogeneity. You can be unemployed in many different ways and making a, lot of a really clear-cut boundary is actually quite difficult. And what influences a company is just, or a human being, is just an immense range of different things. For just a relatively large company, we could easily make a list of, I don't know, hundreds and hundreds of things that could potentially influence their performance. So, Business economics is just a fundamentally different kind of thing. And on top of this, we could even have human beings that change behavior over time. The subject matter they study often changes over time. An atom five billion years ago is just a hydrogen atom. It's just basically the same now. It just hasn't really changed. So, and again, this is just to sort of re-emphasize this point that, that whenever we talk about supply demand or unemployment or innovation or whatever construct sort of thing we're measuring that we are dealing with, that there is some kind of construction going on. Um, we can't just say, look, it's right there. This is an atom and this is identical to this. You can point to one unemployed person that this might be someone who is not searching as actively for a job as another unemployed person who might be unemployed for a different reason. So, so this is the heterogeneity that, that Nelson is talking about. And then he's actually making an explicit comparison and link to experiments. Because the question is, how homogeneous and, and similar and predictable is this social world? So let's say you want to compare how atoms react to some kind of treatment. Well, again, they're identical in one the treatment group and the control group. But how similar are two classrooms? I have different teachers and different buildings, and they consist of different students, different cities. So it's not as homogeneous. So in the elementary school study, I guess the advantage was that we had all schools in Denmark and we had all um, all the students in, of these schools in Denmark. So 
all these small differences in the end even out, but it's still just a different setup. And this is then also what he addresses here on page 1699, that it's becoming more popular to do these experiments, just as you do in medicine. But as he says here, for instance, if we're talking about experiments in school settings, um, there might be differences between schools or even between classrooms. So, and almost always students vary in their responses to different treatments. Um, so two different studies are likely to lead to two different results due to this heterogeneity. Again, if we compare to medicine or biology on other fields, we could find mice that are just basically identical, have lived the exact same life. This is a challenge that we face. This is a challenge that Nelson is trying to emphasize here on this page in particular, but also just in general. And that then leads me to the question that was asked. Does Nelson oppose what a good experiment should contain? So in other words, he says that social science consists of these heterogeneous, these different individuals, groups, organizations. When an experiment, the samples you compare should ideally be as similar as possible. Um, and on top of this, Nelson says <clears throat> social behavior can change over time. So might it make it problematic to be able to do a, a control study? And, and, and well, no, he doesn't oppose as such, but he just points out challenges to how to, how, how to interpret a randomized control trial and how certain we can be that a result in one setting will also function in another setting and, and, and that we really can believe the both internal and external validity of it. So emphasizing that Sure, if you have really homogeneous variables, like in Dan O'Reilly's Bionicle experiment, where you only had male Howard students and measured something very simple, yeah, maybe, but one should really be transparent and acknowledge that, that maybe I'm studying something where um, I struggle with making a clear-cut definition of my variable. There might be other things that are influencing that I just don't really, I'm not really able to capture. So in some sense, I think the Implication then also is you should try out different variables and different setups rather than just saying that a certain cartoon is funny in this or that way, as in Engbear's smiling study. Well, maybe you should try out different cartoons with different kinds of people and, and measure stuff in different ways in order to get to this, that robust result where we can say, look, now we found something. The same with how meaningful, uh, or how meaningful something is. It, it's... Um, Maybe we shouldn't just do it with bionicles. Maybe we should do it with other setups, with other samples, other people, etc. So that's really this heterogeneity that he's talking about, that we shouldn't think that one simple way of, of doing it captures everything that we want to know. It could, in a, when we're dealing with atoms and simple stuff, people, organizations aren't simple. And as I also said in the beginning, that, that we also should be aware of this change in behavior. So just just take the coronavirus as an example it's going to impact how companies and in particular large companies are trying to protect themselves against this in the future maybe ensuring they have setups for doing work from home or how their it system works or how they will deal with customers and how close together tables will be in restaurants or whatever it is it will certainly lead to changes in behavior which could mean that whatever we found out before is not necessarily true afterwards maybe there are some mechanisms and some behavior of people that actually have, have changed over time um so so this is again just to sort of as a crude example emphasize that, that just because we found out that people behaved in this way in 2019 it's not necessarily and as a sort of obvious fact true that they will behave in the same way in 2020 we need to do studies in order to figure that out this is a challenge they don't have in physics the planet jupiter behaves as it did one month and one year and a million years ago and an atom a hydrogen atom behaves the way it did yesterday a week ago one million years ago and a billion years ago there's no change in behavior so that was my response to this question about nelson and experiments and also just in general and an attempt to try to give a brief summary of the key elements in, in, in Nelson.